Hello and welcome, I'm Johnny and you want to create an awesome sticky plus header. It gets out of our way while we're scrolling for more content, slides back in when we scroll back up and has a neat glass effect for when it covers something. Thanks to everyone commenting what you'd like me to cover, there is a lot of interest in headers and one comment explicitly called out Brittany's beautiful portfolio. Brittany is kind enough to provide the source code so we can find out how she did it, but you know, don't just copy and paste the whole site, be cool. Spend a bit of time trying to understand what's happening and always give credit to the people who inspire you. So instead of going with React and style components too, let's implement our awesome sticky glass header using Svelte and Tailwind and maybe inspire someone else in turn. Let's go. First up, let's review the header we've got here already. It's reasonably responsive, but when I scroll down to read more, it gets lost out of view. That's fine, but if I want to toggle dark mode or something, now I gotta scroll all the way back up. Not ideal, but let me explain the Tailwind classes we've got here already. If we had none, our header would look like this, but we're applying flex to help it stack the elements inside as we want them. The main navigation flexes to stretch as much as possible, then we've got the icons at the end. We add the container class, these are Tailwind's responsive containers, which have set up to automatically be centered, so our header won't take over the whole width of wider displays, but have some pleasing padding. Speaking of padding, we apply some extra horizontally and vertically, but remove the horizontal padding on bigger displays, as we can trust the container glass to naturally give our header some space on those viewports, no need to eat into even more space. Finally, we make the regular links a bit bigger with text LZ. Alright, so how do we make this step? All we need is the sticky class and to specify its placement. We want our header zero from the top. And job done. This sets display to sticky, which has some interesting extra properties over setting display to fixed, which used to be our only option back in the day. Perhaps most interesting is that a sticky element will only stick after it crosses a threshold. We see this often in sites that have a big hero section, then their navbar, which will only stick to the top after we scroll down far enough. In smaller elements, we may see this sticky functionality in things like contact lists, but that's by the by, both sticky and fixed would work for our particular header so long as we place it, which we do with that top zero. So we've made our header sticky already, but it's hard to read, especially when it's over the code blocks on the light theme. We can make that a bit better by adding a background color, so let's add a BG white to start with, and immediately this becomes readable. We don't want to sacrifice looking cool though, so we can add some opacity to that color by adding slash and the alpha value we want, let's say 50. Another way to see this is that we've got a white background that's 50% see-through. However, this doesn't look great on the dark theme, so what I've done is I've specified some CSS variables that change according to the theme we're on. I've made up this surface one color CSS var, it's light when we're on the light theme, dark when we're on the dark theme, so let's use that instead of hardcore in white. I've configured this as a color in the Tailwind config, so we can instead use BG surface one, still with a 50% alpha channel. Sweet! To maximize coolness, let's add a glass effect. Backdrop filter is a relatively new CSS property that has been trending massively, especially using it with the blur filter function to achieve that glass effect. With Tailwind, all we need is to add backdrop blur and maybe a modifier if we want the effect to be more or less intense. And to me, this looks great. It's pretty readable even without the background color. But the reason we started designing with background color and why we'll keep it is that background filter is not supported everywhere. Most notably, Firefox is still considering it. We want our sites to be usable and look great by default. And only then take it a step further if more modern features are supported. As an aside, if you're interviewing, there is a strategy commonly called progressive enhancement. And what we're doing here comes as an example in my book. However, someone may debate that we're not explicitly detecting whether the user's browser is supporting background filter, therefore... A user problem we may want to solve is that now our anchors get hidden behind our awesome header. So if we've linked specifically to this section, for example, and someone opens that link, they can't see the section's title. Oh no, they'll be so confused. 
We can solve this quickly with the often neglected but super useful scroll padding top. So, if we go to our main app CSS file and add scroll padding top, let's say 4M to the HTML element, we're golden. And if we don't want to just eyeball 4M, if we think that inevitably we'll change the size of our header one day and forget to update the scroll padding to match, well, we could specify a CSS property for header height and set that to 4 rem for now. So, we can go back to our header, remove the vertical padding and instead specify the height. And did you know that you can now use arbitrary values with Tailwind classes, which means we can pass our CSS variable like this? Only problem is, it looks disgusting. Ugh. So, I wouldn't blame you if you broke out the component styles here, but we will stick with Tailwind and you can check out the deployed side and public GitHub repo, which will help you translate Tailwind classes to vanilla CSS. Speaking of translating, let's move on to moving the header off screen. If we just wanted to hide our header, we could apply the hidden Tailwind class and to make any class dynamic with Svelte, we can do class colon the class name and then pass a value here. Svelte will only apply the class when we pass a truthy value, so let's hard code true for now to see our header disappear. However, if we were to implement this way, we wouldn't be able to animate the transition, as we cannot animate an element's display property. So what we'll do instead is apply a transform, a translate transform, which with Tailwind we can do with translate y full. We can see this moves our header vertically downwards for its full height, so to move it off screen by the same amount, we start the class with a minus. We can debate whether this looks even crazier than the arbitrary value from before, but the point is, it works, and we can add classes for the transition and easing function we want, so if we open our inspector to manually toggle the translate, we get a sneak peek of our header disappearing and reappearing. Whoa. Looking good, but... How are we gonna do this for real? How are we gonna move the header off screen while we're scrolling downwards and back in when we're scrolling up? Well, you better believe we're finally gonna do some JavaScript. Svelte allows us to bind some element values to variables and we can get the window element using Svelte window. We want the window element because we want to bind its scroll y value to a variable we can use. This Y represents how many pixels the user has scrolled vertically from the top of the window to the top of the page. So, if we say the header should be off screen when the user has scrolled more than 100 pixels, we can see our header dynamically going off screen and back in. But why go with another hard coded value here when we can use our header's actual height? Let's introduce a client height number variable and bind it to our header element. Svelte will calculate this to be our header's rendered height. So, we can now say that if we scrolled more than four times our header's height, it should be off screen. Awesome, we've already taken back some screen real estate for our users, but we still haven't solved our problem where if we've scrolled to the end, we need to scroll all the way back up to interact with our header. We can solve this too by complicating things a bit further and accounting for scroll direction. Let's introduce a variable for previous y and refactor our y to current y for clarity. And a reactive variable, scroll direction. For this one, let's say if there is no previous y or the previous y is less than the current y, we're going down. Else, we're going up. And now we can make it a requirement that the header should only be off screen if we're going down. Only hide the header if we scrolled enough and we've last scrolled downwards. This is all well and good, but where do we actually update our previous Y? The answer is currently nowhere, but we want to update it right after the current Y changes. Not at the same time, if we wanted that, we'd have made it a reactive value too, but then it'd always be the exact same as current Y. Again, we want to update it right after current Y changes. One way to do that using Svelte's reactivity is by defining a method derive direction, which will be taking a y number. This new method will be figuring out the direction the same way we were doing with the ternary, but after it's done that calculation, it will also set 
the previous y to the given y, and then return the direction it's derived. We can call this method here, where we're reactively assigning the scroll direction, and pass it our current y. Svelte magic means that this will run whenever current y changes, which is what we want. So, the order of operations is, we scroll, which causes the current y to change, so this method runs to derive the scroll direction, which calculates it using the previous y, and only after update it to be used next time the method runs. Indeed, I'm not making this up, look at how the header pops back in whenever we start scrolling up. Woohoo! We can all agree this was an unmitigated success, all of my problems have been solved, what remains is to account for anyone who prefers reduced motion. For that, we need our translate to be inside the appropriate media query, something Tailwind will take care for us once again if we prefix our class with motion safe. And this is as crazy as it's gonna get today, our implementation is complete. So let's recap for our ultimate demo. I navigate through the site, click an article, all good. I start scrolling and eventually the header vanishes. Once I'm done reading, once I start scrolling back up, the header reappears so I can quickly navigate to my profile or whatever else I wanted to do. As a bonus, anchors are not hidden by our header so we can link straight to a section and our visitors will not be confused in respect to what they're reading. Well, they may be confused to be fair because I wrote this mostly for demo purposes, but not because they can't see the section title. Which is my point, we do correctly have the section title visible and the header will of course continue to get out of the way as needed once they start scrolling. Finally, if I'm a user who prefers reduced motion, let's emulate that, the header remains always on, I'd never even know it vanishes for some other users, but I can still appreciate how awesome it looks thanks to that glass effect. Sweet. For further enhancements, the user's scroll direction may be handy in other places in our app. If that were the case, we could extract this logic out, maybe it'd be the layout component that would be running it, and put in some info in a store for many other components to consume. But no need to prematurely optimize. In my experience, many apps only need this logic for their one header, so if you've only got one component which needs it now, just keep it simple, keep it there. As far as the sticky part of the functionality goes, maybe we'd want the section headers to be sticky too. Hopefully there is enough information in this video to implement that, should you wish. And as always, there is the deployed site and public GitHub repo to check things out on your own pace. And hey, if you wanna copy and paste some code, be my guest. After all, there is few things easier than copy and pasting, one of them being liking and subscribing to this channel. That's only two clicks and you're already here. If you have too much stuff in your head, there, join me making a hamburger menu in this video. And YouTube thinks you'll also enjoy this one. Thanks a bunch for watching, I'll see you around.